Welcome and thank you for joining us this evening for our remote year six evening. Um, if you haven't seen me uh, before, uh, I'm Andrew Davis, principal of Exmouth Community College, um, and I've got a range of colleagues who are joining me uh, this evening who in a moment or two, uh, Lisa Moulton, our assistant principal who oversees Key Stage 3, will introduce you to everybody um, so that you can hear Miss Moulton speak a little bit, but also then subsequently go off uh, for your tutor meetings as well. So hopefully it will be a really exciting evening and give you an opportunity to find out lots more about the school um, and lots more about who your tutor is going to be and the sort of things that we do as a school as well. Um, before we get into all of that though I just wanted to say a few words and firstly um, an apology really about we are so sorry that this is having to take place online um, since we know that teams and remote um, operations it's no it's no replacement for meeting families and your children and students face to face um, but I really do hope that the evening at least gives you an opportunity to find out a little bit more about your college and also please remember that you can um, ask any questions that you like and if you send those in to us we will try and answer those live as we go along um, and also we've had some pre-recorded um, questions as, as such or pre submitted questions as such um, and we'll try and answer those during the evening as well. So um, we hope to try and make it as interactive and as dynamic an experience as we possibly can. But as I say, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are we're really pleased to to have you along, even if we can't see you live and face to face. Um, before I pass on to Ms. Moulton, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that we've been um, particularly working on uh, recently. Um, and the first thing to say is that we're really proud of our school um, and we are so pleased that you have chosen to join us. And, and we know how important this decision is for you uh, as, as the students and, and for your family. And it's a really important decision for us as well. We see this as the start of a seven year learning journey with you, with, with us, potentially with you leaving um, at the end of post 16. That's a long time to be together and it's a big commitment that we're all making but I can promise you absolutely that every single member of staff at the college whether they're a teaching member of staff or um or a support member of staff that um, that we're all here to do our very best for you and to get you the very best education that we possibly can get. And we have three really simple aims. The first is to provide outstanding teaching every single day in every single lesson, which really challenges and inspires you as students and, and helps you to engage in deep learning. So not just something that you remember today and forget tomorrow, but something that really lasts, something that sticks with you and hopefully changes you as a person. That's what that's what we're hoping for. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment or two. The second thing and the reason why Miss Leslie uh, and Miss Hall are here this evening is we want to deliver to you absolutely amazing pastoral care so that when your child or when the students that are online tonight have a moment of difficulty, that something goes wrong either in school or outside of school, that we are right there to support you and, um, and, and make sure that you can continue to access really high quality education um, and regardless whatever um, background you might have as a family. We want everybody to get the very best from their time at the college and that's what the pastoral care team is really there um, to do. And we have numerous other teams as well, some of whom are represented tonight. So we have a pupil premium team that works with students. We also have an SEND team that works with students. We have a behaviour support team that's work, that works with students. So there's lots of different teams across the college of specialist members of staff who can help you um, to, to get through um, your education and to, and to really feel that you have been successful. And the final aim that we have is to ensure that our college is at the heart of our community and that the education that we provide enables students to make their next step and contribute positively to society. We really don't mind what that next step is. Your next step might be that you really want to go to Oxford University, you want to go to Cambridge University or Bristol University, top universities in the world really. And you know, we have students that do that every year, but also your ambition might be to become a nurse or a plumber or a teacher. And all of those things are equally valid. They're, they're all equally valued by us as well. It really doesn't matter. Our job as a school, we believe, is to give you the knowledge and the understanding that you can make some choices um, at a later point in your life. And, and our job is to get you into the best position possible to enable you to make those choices about what you want 
want to do as students with your life and what that next step will be. A key element of the work that we do is around our curriculum and, and the curriculum is the stuff that we teach you and it's the order that we teach you as well. And over the past two years, we have completely revamped what we teach and the order that we te teach it as well. And our curriculum is, is now based on students learning the powerful knowledge, the essential knowledge that you need to know as young people that will enable you to succeed in all of your different subjects. So in Miss Leslie's um, subject, uh, who you'll meet in a moment, um, Miss Leslie teaches RE and so she will have decided with her team what are the absolute fundamentals in RE that you need to learn. And Miss Rowe, who's on the call as well tonight, she teaches drama. So they will have decided what are the essential bits of knowledge. And by building on that over your time with us, we hope to make sure that you become amazing practitioners in all of your different subjects. And we combine that by talking a lot about cognitive load theory and making sure that we are teaching you with the absolute very latest techniques and the most up to date research on how to make the learning and the lessons that you attend as interactive as you possibly can. And that that subject matter really sticks in your head and is something that stays with you so that you're really well prepared for exams and really well prepared for the next steps that we have for you. So we've put an enormous amount of work into our curriculum and teaching and learning over the last couple of years. You may also have noticed from our website and uh, from um, when you walk into the building at the moment, there's a big um, sort of strap line there that we use all the time, which is called learn, progress and grow. And that's what we want you to do as students. We want you to learn things and we want you to progress and get better at those things. And then we want you to grow. And the grow bit means that you've internalized. It means that it's changed you in some way as a person, or you've learned some way of using that new knowledge. And my best example of that is the picture behind me. So um, normally when we're in the main hall and we do this face to face, um, I take this picture along with me. And this is a picture that a student painted. So it's not um, it's not like a professional artist. It's a student who painted this a couple of years ago now and it's a perfect example of what we mean by learn progress and grow and it's a perfect example of how we hope that all of our students will progress in all of their subjects because the person that did this amazing painting it doesn't really do it justice here with me pointing at it on the wall it's an amazing picture done in oil so it's really really difficult technical thing to do and the, but the person that painted this started out just like you in year six, going into year seven, might have done a bit of painting. But what they did when they learned when they came to us is they learned how to use brushes properly. They learned how to put colours together. They learned about um, the canvas that you might use for such a painting, um, how, what different paints that might that might be the best thing to use, whether it's better to be landscape or whether it's better to be portrait. These were all things that they learned. And as they were learning these things, as they went through the school, because they couldn't just do this in year seven, um, as they learned these things, they progressed. They were reflective practitioners. Um, they were reflective learners and they thought about what they were what they were doing and how they were using those paints and how they could make those things that they were doing even better and, and progress even further. So they might have been a great artist in year seven, but they wanted to make themselves even better. And every day they were trying to improve and they kept on improving until eventually using the feedback from staff, they were able to produce something like this. And then they've reached the grow stage. They've become an expert in that particular area so that this person could go off without a teacher being around and could produce a painting like that using all the knowledge that they've developed and learned, all those techniques that they've mastered during their time with us. So they could go and paint that for themselves and that would give them a huge amount of satisfaction, a huge amount of enjoyment. And in this case, it gives others a huge amount of enjoyment. So the number of people that walk into my office and say, that is an amazing painting, it fills them with a bit of joy. So after you've learned things and you've progressed things, you enter this grow stage, which is about you internalizing things about you thinking about how you do things and that's where we want every single person to be in all of their subjects so maybe we can't all be amazing artists like this but some people will be brilliant at math some people will be brilliant at drama some people are going to be brilliant scientists the aim is for us in all of your subjects by using this model of learning something progressing and improving on it and then be eventually internalizing it and becoming real masters 
in that particular skill or that particular bit of knowledge, that particular subject, we can enable you to do really well in your GCSE results, to do really well in whatever it is that you want to do um, to do next. And that's our aim. That's really our aim over the next seven years is to make sure that you've mastered all of your different subjects. We have a huge range of subjects at the school. We're really, really fortunate. So it might be that you want to be an engineer or it might be that you want to study Latin or it might be that you want to become a dual linguist and do French and Spanish. Whatever it is that you want to do, we really hope and, and we really believe that we have the staff at the college that will enable you to become those masters out of all of those um, different subjects and that you can and be real deep learners uh, that, that changes you and allows you to make connections and compa compare and contrast information and be really creative so that you have this love of learning uh, and a love of knowledge that lasts with you not just while you're at school doing exams but into later life as well and when you're in a profession or a career and you have to learn new skills that you love doing that and that you are you have the techniques and the and the um, skills to enable you to do really well in whatever profession it is that you subsequently choose to go to after your, as I say, potentially seven year journey for uh, with us. Um, so I hope that gives you a little bit of flavour of what we're trying to achieve as a, as a whole school. Um, as I say, I'm really sorry we can't meet you in person uh, this evening, um, but we will we will do um, uh, after the six weeks holiday, of course. Um, and I know Miss Moulton's got some more information on that and a load of other things as well. So thanks very much for attending tonight and I will hand over to our assistant principal for Key Stage 3, Mrs Moulton. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our welcome evening. Um, as Mr Davy said, we're very disappointed we can't meet all of you in person, but we've been very pleased to meet a number of students um, over the last few weeks in their library visits. And I know some of you have had some individual tours as well. Um, before I do have a little presentation we're going to go through, but before I do that, we would like to introduce you to some faces on the screen in order for you to put some faces to names. Uh, you will notice socially distanced behind me is Mrs Hall. So Mrs Hall is the pastoral support assistant for year seven next year. Extremely lucky. Mrs Hall is a, a wonderful experienced member of staff. So trust me, any problem or issue or anything, it is highly likely she will have seen it and dealt with it before. So don't ever be concerned about going to her. And we have Mrs. Leslie, who is your head of year. Um, oh, I think we're going to show some pictures first and then I'll just... Um, and then Mrs. Leslie will see you afterwards. And we have Mrs. Edwardson as well, who is our Senko. Um, so if anybody does have some extra little um, different ways of thinking and different ways of learning, Mrs. Edwardson is the one who makes sure we all cater for your needs. Um, I'm just going to share a presentation for you. Um, just, has it? We're just checking if it's. Oh, not yet. Oh, I might have to do it that way. Sorry, so it's not. Just gonna flip over. Sorry, oh, we're just flipping. Ah, so I think the presentation is on now. Very good. Thank you. So, um, what you're seeing at the moment, something I think that we haven't necessarily been able to publicise enough or share enough with all our parents and community um, as the addition to this senior leadership team. So as Mr Davis had pointed out at our open evening in September, we have got some new assistant principals. So for the size of the college, it is important that we do have senior leaders uh, strategically moving certain aspects of the college together. Um, but it, there is also means there is more resources in order for you, your child to be able to access um, their learning um, in terms of resources, in terms of finance. Um, I've just had a message to say I'm going to change the way I'm sharing the screen. Apollo. Oh, it looks like it's still not up. Uh, 
share it how you were and then just click on slide share. That's it. That's it. OK, thank you. Um, so as you can see, we obviously have Mr Davis at the top. We do have two deputy principals and now we have seven assistant principals all here, making sure that your child and your family are catered for um, alongside your lead, your year team. Um, as I mentioned, we do have Mrs. Leslie, who's head of year seven, and Mrs. Hall, who's your pastoral support assistant. But on a day to day basis, just for you to be aware, Mr. Allen, as a deputy principal, is operationally in charge of Green Close, which is where most of our year seven lessons take place and where your tutor group are based. Um, and we also have Mrs. Powell, who's our key stage three administrative support. Um, I know a lot of parents have already had phone calls with Mrs. Powell already, but another person, if a student needs to find anybody for some support during the day, they can go to. Um, I know Mr. Um, Davis has already mentioned to you about our seven year journey. So it's really important to us that all children feel like they can develop whatever knowledge and skills they want to be able to move into whatever their next step is going to be. In our ideal world, you will be with us for the next seven years and we will make sure you are fully supported and able to reach your absolute potential um, all through Key Stage 3, where you're developing knowledge um, across a broad range of subjects, hopefully um, fostering your self-reflection and developing creativity. Obviously, in Key Stage 4 is where you start to take your first external qualifications. We want to make Make sure they're as high as they can be for you and they give you lots of choices and then we do have Mrs Craddock here this evening who's our assistant principal for Key Stage 5 um, and we want you to move into Key Stage 5 because there's so many different courses available within the college in order for you to be able to then leave at 18 ready for whatever it is you want to do next. Um, one of the things that we are really focusing on and is wonderful to see around the college is our language around being ready to learn. Um, so often I know children, we've had a couple of questions about what are the rules within the college? And um, if you think of the four B's in terms of what you need to do every day and how we need to treat each other, then nobody's going to go far wrong. So being prepared. So that's where we arrive at lessons on time. We sit where we asked and we have all our equipment ready and um, being respectful to each other. So obviously being um, pleasant and polite um, making sure we treat everybody and everything in our environment with respect. Uh, being engaged, so that's where we want to learn and we want to get better and we're interested in our learning and in our extracurricular activities and also being kind. So um, to our peers, to our community, to our adults, so um, always treating others as we would like to be treated. So for September, being for be ready, be ready to learn is um, the way to go and then you won't uh, get into too, any trouble I'm sure and you will feel really confident at joining us. Um, alongside that we did have a couple of questions so we did have a virtual worry box and thank you to everybody who took the time to submit some questions and um, we have had quite a few questions regarding the populations so um, you will have been I notified already of which tutor group your child is in um, you will have noticed it's a colour um, it's either a red a green or a blue colour um, the populations are then divided into tutor groups and um, you will remain with your tutor group for registration and lesson 42 but then other than that um, we have a lot of subjects that are mixed um, across the population so you'll start year seven in your tutor group but then as student as teachers get to know the students more the groups will be mixed up a little bit. Some of them might be setted. For example, we might have a group where some students need a little bit more help and support with their learning. And we're more aware of that this year than ever. So um, we've had a lot of liaison with our primary colleagues. Um, so we know maybe which bits of content were delivered during lockdown or which bits um, were had to be missed out because of lockdowns in year five and six. So we will be prepared for that and we'll be able to help students catch up. Um, it might then be that students are in different groups depending on what kind of content they've covered. Um, so if, for example, in the green population, we have four tutor groups, in your four PE classes, 
they could be a mixture of all four tutor groups. Um, some subjects, we actually have extra groups, so like technology, because of the workshops, um, you actually go into five classes. So the four tutor groups are broken down into five different classes. Um, generally, English, Math, Science, P, Technology are the ones that get mixed straight away. Some of the other subjects are taught in your tutor group, but then as I say, as you move through the year, they will gradually get mixed around. Um, and certainly by the time you're in your 9, 10, 11, it is highly unusual to even still be in your tutor group for a subject or for a lesson. Um, something just to make you all really aware, the colours are used as a way to put students into tutor groups now. And um, because when we start to make the tutor groups, we don't always have the names of the tutors. And um, once you join the college in September, the colours really don't exist anymore. Um, you will have noticed in your letter, I put next to the red population, it said A, the green population is, no, the blue population is B and the uh, green population is C. So generally as a staff, we will then call them 7A3, for example, and that would be the teaching group. So in other years, seven, they're in the population A and they're in group three. And the tutor groups become your um, tutor initials. And we're really lucky, Mr Stock has already more or less finished our timetable. So you, we've been able to share that with you and you're going to meet your tutors this evening and you have those tutor initials. So it's much easier to get used to the tutor initials if you need to ring our anthem so you can say, oh, my child is in 7PS. You are, we are much likely to be able to identify the tutor group quicker than with a colour as that's how they are, um, are identified in our SIM system. Okay, then some people have asked about visiting the college. Um, we're really lucky, 10 of our primary schools have had a variety of library visits already. And Mrs. Hall and Mrs. Leslie were able to join in. So lots of the students have already met um, Mrs. Leslie and Mrs. Hall as well. And um, we've had lots and lots of individual tours with Mrs. Leslie and Mrs. Tigwell, Mrs. Hall, and some of our learning mentors. Um, we Next steps. Um, we are really delighted that so many of you have decided to join in the Big Step Week in August. So at this moment in time, it is planned for 201 children to take part in that. Um, Mr Leverton, who is the main organiser of the Big Step, um, he has said the reserve list has hit 50. So he is doing his best at the moment to see if we can get some extra groups on um, in order to accommodate those people who, are, who put their name on the reserve list as well. Um, so that will be brilliant that you'll be here for the full week, getting to know the SAI. Um, you've got a little passport for the week to complete in terms of routines and where different places are. Um, also, um, obviously, we're, there's a lot riding on the 19th of July, although I understand Mr Johnson has made some announcements this evening. Um, COVID of dependent, we are planning on year seven um, being the year group who return first on Wednesday the 8th of September um, and year eight to nine remain at home doing remote learning. So that is provisional at this stage. It hasn't been communicated widely um, because there is a potential. It was muted last week that we may have to retest all the children as we did in September when we opened. But at the moment, our plan is for year seven to start alone on Green Close on Wednesday the 8th of September, which will be wonderful for them to be here without other students initially. Um, something I did mean to say there, if your child is extremely anxious and you do feel a visit to the site beforehand would be beneficial, then please do email our transition team um, and we will see how we can go about organising that for you um, outside of school hours so they're not mixing with others. So please do. Um, so last week, some questions that were submitted. So somebody asked about second languages and other special subjects and extracurricular. Um, we are extremely fortunate that at Exmouth, we, all of our students still study two languages. Um, so there are a lot of schools at the moment that have moved to one, but we're extremely fortunate that all the students in year seven start studying Spanish and French. Um, there is opportunities later on for them to just move into studying one at GCSE and A-level, but some of our students will carry on studying both. Um, really lucky this year, so I know there's 93 of you that are going to be studying Latin and you've already um, sat your Latin test and we've got your groups ready for September. Um, I mean, that's an amazing provision and as far as we're aware, they're the only state school in South West to be able to offer that. Um, in a non-COVID year, there were loads and loads of extracurricular activities in many different departments, dance, drama, art, technology, PA. So there is usually something on most days. Um, it has been a little bit curved this year as I see has a primary 
um, where the year sevens, for example, only do clubs one day at, at the moment because then the other year groups do them on other days. But we're hoping, fingers crossed, come September, we'll be able to get back into lots of extracurricular activities again. And just to um, point out again, there is homework support every evening, Monday to Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. So that is there for any student as well to sign up through Mrs Hunter in order to access some support every day after school um, with your homework. Okay, and um, one of the big thing is what if something goes wrong? What if I have an issue? What if I'm just a little bit anxious or worried about something? The number one person to go to first is obviously your tutor. So they are the person you're going to see every single morning. And um, so you can talk with them. They will generally be able to resolve it something very quickly for you. You know, the first week or so while you're getting used to the new routines, it might be that you, you can't quite remember where something is or you've forgotten a piece of equipment. Please do tell your tutor straight away. Don't worry. And they will be able to help you solve it. Um, if maybe for some reason you haven't been able to tell your tutor or you or um, you haven't or maybe your tutor is absent that morning so that can sometimes happen and you've got a different tutor and you didn't want to talk to them then please you can come to the key stage three office where mrs powell is we also have a lady called mrs satchel at the moment and um, that you can pop in and have a chat with or obviously your year office where you'll have mrs leslie and mrs hall um, or also obviously some of you have met mrs tigwell mrs edwardson in our send department Please speak with them if you um, want, if you have an issue as well. And um, if it is a learning or progress issue, then please speak to your teachers. Your teachers really want you to do well with your learning and in your lessons. So if it's anything to do with learning or progress, one of the best people to speak to straight away is your teacher if you're worried about anything and they will generally be able to help you straight away. Um, so, um, I'm, I've lost the screen. I'm just going to check if there's any questions have been coming in while we've been talking. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment. Um, I don't know if Mrs. Ro, did you? Do we need to share any questions or anything that you want from the chat? No, nothing. Okay, so um, the plan now for the next bit, your tutors are going to go through more information for you about what a day-to-day -day, um, kind of journey in Exmouth looks like. Um, you should have the link, so you just need to click on the correct link for um, your tutor. All the tutors are doing exactly the same um, talk, so please don't um, worry if you happen to join the wrong room by accident or if we like, for example, we've got people with two children joining us. Both are going to be exactly the same. And if you do, if you are in Garner and you're joining, then I am going to take that presentation is Miss Wood is a fantastic new English teacher who's joining us in September. So she's not actually working with us at the moment. Uh, Miss Rebold Gooding isn't able to be here. So Mrs. Rowe is going to take her one. And again, Mrs. Ashenden is a new our new key stage four technology coordinator who's joining us in in September. So Mrs. Leslie is going to take her um, session this evening. But other than that, all the other sessions are going to be taken by your tutor. So you will at least get an opportunity to see your tutor on screen um, and ask any questions through the chat if you wish. Um, so I'm just going to hang on a moment or two before I start my tutor meeting in case there is any other questions. Um, if not, then um, Please do stay in touch through our transition. Please, we will send out lots more information um, towards the end of term and at the start of September um, and enjoy your tutor meetings. <laughs>